In today's special Pimp My Ride Where Are They Now video, we will be interviewing JT who had his 1988 Honda Civic pimped out in Season 2 by West Coast Customs. Stay tuned all the way to the end of the video to find out what became of the car and what JT is up to today. Hi, my name is JT, I'm 19, and this is my ride. I drive a 1988 Honda Civic. Speechless. This can't possibly run. How did you get on the show Pimp My Ride? Like, how did the experience come by? How did you get the car, et cetera? Was it your own car, or like, mm -hmm. did they give it to you, or what was going on with that? Okay, so, um, yes, it was my own car. I had a 90, uh, 1988 Honda Civic hatchback. So uh, it, was, it was a hatchback car. Uh, it was probably, yeah, it was my first car. I got it coming out of high school. So it was, I'd say, I graduated in 2003 of high school. Uh, I say I got the car probably late 2003, early 2004. So how I found out about Pam My Ride, I was a big fan of the show. Um, while I was watching the show, I went on, I just so happened to be on Yahoo browsing and mm. I seen that they had a casting call. So I went to MTV, checked it out, seen that they was having a, a casting call down in Santa Monica, California, drove my car down there. I didn't think they was going to actually audition me. So once I got there, man, it was about a thousand cars, Mike thousand cars yeah. like lined up mm -hmm. back to back uh some were some were new some were old some were beat up some were uh all over the place so we were lined up in the car we was waiting in the line for about two hours so one of the guys one of the uh, production assistants came on he said hey y'all you, you know um it's just too many cars we were closing off the audition so you guys gonna have to come back so he went back in everybody's kind of pissed off on and on like uh signing stuff Everybody got uh got ready to get in their car. And I think it was like probably down to 200 cars. He came back out and said, look, I'm going to pick 10 cars um, to meet me in the other parking lot to do some quick, uh, a quick two minute audition to talk about your car. Now, within them 10 cars that he picked, I was like probably like the ninth car that he picked. So he ended up picking my car. We drove over to the next parking lot and he had us do a, a two minute audition after that. Um, Everything was kind of up in the air for a few months. Then when I was in college, I ended up getting a call two months after from MTV saying I made the show or whatever. They called you right away saying you were on the show? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's, yes, That's sir. crazy because, like, I've heard the story where, like, they're, a lot of the contestants that I've talked to, at least, at least their, with their scenario is that they, they just say you're in the running between, like, three other people and you'll get mm -hmm. a, a knock on the door and it's either going to be exhibit or yeah maybe yeah I, so i was i was so i was getting to that so that's okay. what it so when they when they did the initial pick and gave me the call it was just like okay we're gonna put you in the house and they gave me the same rundown too it's, it's down to you and two other people so mm -hmm. whoever gives the best enthusiasm uh hat, who's real charismatic who really wants yeah. to ride pimp that's who's gonna get the show so they did put me through that process mm -hmm. after we did the whole filming in the house and them riding around in my car and everything, and us doing B-roll on a, a car before it got pimped out. So that is okay. true. That's accurate right there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. did they do anything to make the car, like, appear worse than what it actually was? Or did they do anything to the car? Did you do anything to it? Anything yeah, my, you want? My, my car was pretty fucked up already, man. Yeah. So it, it ran good. I had beat and I had, like, good sound in it already. But it was just, it was an old car, man. It was 88 in, in the, the early 2000s. Yeah. So it was it was pretty ran down. So they didn't um do anything messed up to it because it was already messed up. Okay. Um my friends call my car World War Three because it looks like my car been in a battle. My doors are popping. That car stank. <laughs> I wish we had smell of vision so y'all can smell what the f coming out of there. Maybe that's why this window's open to ventilate the funk. So that was that was the the cool part of it. I didn't think they was gonna pick me. Once they gave me that rundown about it being between me and two other people, I was already kind of counting myself out. Like, nah, I ain't gonna make it. I ain't gonna get on the show. I ain't gonna get on the show. I'm chilling and willing, and it's time to ride. So please, MTV, go and pimp my ride. Yeah. So did they like sell it to you? Like, be like, did they like tell you lines while you were doing, or like be extra enthusiastic, or talk about this, or like? How set up now, was the whole process, or was it? Um, it was, it was, it was, um, it was no lines given, but they did, they did kind of manipulate the situation in a good way to make you be real enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when the knock at the door happened, so uh, initially the first process they went through with me was 
you know, we were driving, filming my car. They had me sit on the car, get my little, you know how they had their little lines, like my car is messed up. And Ain't a bump, this is what happened. My seat's not attached, so while I'm driving, my friends gotta get their gasoline on. Yeah. Yada, yada, yada. They did that whole process uh, the first day, then day two, we did more B-roll of them following my car around, uh, me riding around with the blanket over me and things of that nature. And then um, the last uh, shot of the day, that's when they had lunch, we broke from lunch, and they came to me and broke down a whole speech on, it's down to you and two contestants. Now, if you hear a knock at the door, either it's going to be exhibit, that means you're on the show and your ride going to get him, or it's going to be a producer who's basically saying, ah, you didn't make it, JT, so, you know, good riddance. You know, thank you for participating, but you didn't make the show. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So talk about, like, the next steps. Once you realize you got on the show, like, talk about, like, the rest of the experience and stuff like that. Oh, man. So once we – um once – so I'll never forget it. We was in the house, man. They did the knock at the door. I was kind of out of it, man, Um, in a sense of just kind of taking myself out of it, saying they're not going to get me being negative, having negative thoughts. And once I opened the door and it was exhibit, all that enthusiasm was real. The excitement mm -hmm. was real as hell at that moment because I was really excited to be getting my rod pimp, seeing how it was on the show. JT. Oh, X to the Z. What's up, man? JT, what's happening, man? X to the Z. Good? Hey, what's up? I'm good. Oh, man. Hey, there we go. Oh, X to the Z. <laughs> now, initially, I didn't know the process of how it was going to work because at that point, they kind of, they took, they take your, uh, you do the whole talking with Exhibit. That's the first. You know what? So, congratulations, homie. You did it. Come on, dude. We've seen wood screws. We've seen tape. We've seen gum. Never tampon. Are oh, you going to hear me, B-Box? Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> I said I'm going home. <laughs> going around the car, that whole filming took about uh, two hours, so it was cool to meet Exhibit. He was super cool as hell, uh, fun to be on set with. We did that whole process of us filming that. Oh, yeah. You never know when you need him. Oh, you get down like that? Yeah, you see, one is for the one is for the mom and one is for the mix. Oh! <laughs> they took the car, gave me the rental, um, while they had my car, and I believe they had a car for about, I say, two months or so. Okay. Uh, two and a half months, yeah. And I had to rental that whole time. They paid for the rental. That was cool. And um, I was hoping, because I know every season they give somebody, they um, award somebody with a new car. Oh, yeah. So I was hoping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every, every you hoping that was going to be you. Man, I was hoping. I was hoping. Yeah. I'm like, shit, man, I hope they give me a new car, because my, my shit was messed up, man. And I was yeah. too tall for the car anyway, I felt like. So I'm like, I hope they give me a new car. But um, after that, that's when uh, they called me. Hey, JT, yo, your car is done. They gave me a call time when to come, and I met them at West Coast Customs, and that was when I uh, see my car uh, for the first time or whatever. Yeah, so what was your reaction? Was your reaction genuine when you saw the car? Did you really like it? Did you really enjoy it? Um, Yeah, yeah. Uh You're going to make a lot of noise when you check out your brand new win. <laughs> oh, man! Yeah, uh, I was yeah. I was kind of what they do. Usually they had us do, I say, three or four takes without seeing your car. So yeah, you that's what I've heard. Yeah, that's what I've seen. Enthusiastic the first few takes without seeing your car. Then maybe on that fourth or fifth take, that's when they finally reveal, reveal the car. And uh, man, I was shocked. I was blown away. I was blown away. Yes. Yes. Uh, Ooh. Yeah. Oh, man. Andy, Oh man, this is this is a dream, man. Am I dreaming of what? Am I dreaming? No, you know. This is it. It looked like a race car. Um, I wasn't too really happy about the colors. Yeah. But I was cool. I was I was grateful, man. I was just grateful yeah. to, uh, that it wasn't looking how I was looking before, or whatever. Yeah. No, it was definitely pretty flashy. Like. Yeah. Purple. It was like purple. So like that was purple. that's not my favorite yeah. color for a guy. But <laughs> no, it definitely turned a lot of heads still. Oh, did you see the pinky ring? Oh my god! <laughs> I do it again. Oh. oh! Yeah, yeah. And it was um I mean it was cool, man. It was fun. Uh that whole day of shooting was cool. Uh, it's me. You see he kept splashing that pinky ring. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh what I what I learned about them, man, is you know, West Coast Customs, they're just um they do exterior and interior, but they don't do the actual motor shit in the car. Yeah. Or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. You know, and I didn't know that at first. So I'm thinking once I got the car, you know, I rolled it off the lot. Or whatever the case may be, it was good. It was cool for a few mm -hmm. weeks, and then it started breaking wigging down. out after that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> started breaking yeah. down and everything. That's that's what happened to a lot of them. Unfortunately, they didn't do much 
they didn't do much yeah. engine work like it was like yeah, part nah. of it was like it, like in their contract too much liability like i know some of them broke down like when they mm-hmm. are at the shop so then they would send to another shop and have them yep. put a new engine into it yeah but like well, we'll see we'll see with me they didn't i don't think they didn't put a new engine in it but i i never forget i was just riding on the freeway and my shit broke down out of nowhere and um uh, was cutting on and off and i'm like oh shit so i pulled over i heard up and called the uh one of the producers and then they linked me with a production assistant to say, okay, we're going to get your car towed to the West coast Customs so they can, no, no, not West coast customs to another, um, a mechanic or something mm-hmm. like that. So they sent me to one of their mechanics. He looked at it, yada, yada, yada. I think he had it for like maybe a week. They ended up giving me a, a rental car for that week. And then I got the car back and I think it lasted up to maybe a month or two, but it, it was just, I had the same motor, the engine, everything was still uh pretty much the same underneath the hood. Yeah, so it was it was yeah. like cool, but it didn't make your car any nicer. Yeah, nah, nah. It was it was just man, it was just great eye candy. And I and and in my yeah. car they put um, I believe I think the PS two was out then. It was a PS two, either the PS two or the three. Uh, that was out then. They put that in the car. Uh, I think I had seven TVs, cameras. Yeah, you had like cameras, uh, TVs. You had the you had like the tablet that pulled out of the dash with like the man the t- tablet yeah. out the dashboard and then I had the um the two sixteens uh in the back I mean the two fifteens that had the spinners on it yeah and everything so yeah yeah the P rally Rams all that but it was it was just too much power it was too much power for that damn car too much mm-hmm. power yeah like my, too much um, weight my too radio much, too much weight loaded and everything or yeah you know? the um the radio was uh. It popped out. It had the whole DVD. It was like a state of the art brand new radio system or whatever. So it was just too much power for the car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So what did you yeah. end up doing with the car then, after it kept breaking down and everything? Man, I just sat. I just sat it up, man, underneath my parking store in my apartment, man, for like probably like some years, man, some years. And um, we was moving, so from house to house, I just keep a car cover over it, um. Mm-hmm. Whenever it couldn't cut on, we'll start it up. I took it to different people I knew who fixed cars, who couldn't fix it, and, and they everybody kept saying it was ele- it was electric problem. Mm-hmm. So everybody I took it to, they didn't specialize in ele- in electric in the car. So I just kind of let it sit up um, for years, and then I'll never forget 2007 when I was priming myself to really f- like get the engine, everything fixed, get the uh, electricity in the car fixed. I'll never forget, man, I was coming from Corona. Some dudes ended up casing the car, meaning when I pulled inside my slot, they was off outside of the apartment watching the car go in, put the car over the cover, and when I woke up the next morning, they broke in the car, man, took all my TVs, my oh, radio, man. took all that shit out. Yeah, man, and I was I was devastated. I was yeah, devastated. Yeah, that sucks, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So after that, um, uh, surprisingly, I ended, up get, I ended up getting it back running. I took it to a great mechanic. I know, shout out to Henry. He uh, fixed it up for me. And it was running for some years after that. Start having a little bit more problems with it because now at this point, you got his holes in the car. His holes in the in the seats. His holes in the red and the, where the radio go. It's just, and it's, it's wiring all over the place from when they took that out. I never got yeah. nothing sealed up, replaced it or nothing. So it was just a bunch of open pockets in there. End up breaking down. Sat it at one of my friend's house. Um, I'm getting ready to come over there to do some music. They call me like, hey, Jay, man, they tore in your car. What? They tore in your car because the tags wasn't up to date. Oh, and I yeah. Just said, parked in the street. I just said, yeah, I just said to hell with it, man, and let them take the car. I was like, forget it, man. I just was yeah. tired of that at that point. That happened, yeah. that happened to other people, too. Like, they'd park it at their street. Like, it got wrecked or something, and then they would just park yeah. in the street, and then it got towed away. Really? Yeah. So, like, here's wow. what, it's a crazy story. So, some guy, like, he was storing wow. at his friend's house. And uh-huh. like he stored it there for like two years or something like that, like a year, two years. Mm-hmm. And it was like it got rear-ended. So it just parked in the street. And then that guy said, wow. Well, you can't store any here. I'm like, I need the space or whatever. So yeah. he was he this is this is a crazy story, but like he called the guy to tow it. And mm-hmm. he got talking to the tow tr- tow truck driver. And he said he had a son who was getting into trouble. And he's like, uh, would you sell the car to me as like a father-son project? And he's like, wow. he was like, he was like helping them move stuff out of the house or like he was going to Vegas for the weekend or something like that. And he's like, as soon as we get yeah. back to Vegas, I'll sell the car to you. And then like, he, he just left the car on the street for like one more week or something like that. And then he got a call saying the car was towed away and impounded. And the same guy who said he was going to bought it, picked it up and he just impounded it or whatever. And he never got it back. Oh, it was like something man, that's like that. crazy. Wow. Yeah. Some of the stories are like crazy about him. Like, 
I'm looking into getting I'm like in the process of buying one of the cars from the show myself. Like I've been a big fan of it. And I'm like, really you know, make a lot of videos with it. So like I'm yeah, I'm worried about it getting stolen, man. <laughs> for sure. Oh, yeah. No, nah, no. Nah. You you should you should be good, man. I I was pretty, man. I'm like, it's too many years of just issues after issues after yeah. issues. So I'm like, maybe it's just not meant for me to have it. And I I I just I was hurt when I had to let it go, but I just let it go, man. Yeah. No. Yeah. A lot of the stuff, yeah. like the wiring is insane because like they said, a lot of the stuff that's wrong with it is just electrical. Like the windows don't work or no yeah. AC or like yep. like the wiring, all the wiring that went in there is just insane. Like the, the craftsmanship and the engineering is just crazy. Like it's a lot of and, stuff into a piece of and, that, and that's crazy. That's crazy you said that about the windows because I still had to roll down. From yeah. Mine. I had to roll mine down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That's wild. So it was 100% free. Like I just want to clarify that. Like you didn't yes. pay anything. Yes. No, yeah, and that's no. what all these people be saying. They'd no. be saying, seen it online, saying, "Oh man, it was the biggest scam in the world. They didn't fix their car. They had to pay for yeah. rentals and everything." But no, nah, that, that's like I've talked to people, and that's not true at all. Like, yeah, everyone, it's not. It's every not. comment that I see on every single video is like, "The show was fake. The biggest lie in history." Yeah, so, nah. <laughs> yeah, they, nah. I, and I, I've been seeing that too, and a lot. Of, I've been seeing a lot of people kind of uh, trash and get mad at Exhibit. I'm like, well, he didn't do. He was no, just he didn't, do, he didn't do anything to the cars. You saw me at the beginning and at the end. You never see me pick up a wrench. You never see me pick up a polishing rag. You never see me wash the motherfuckers. Yeah, he didn't do nothing. He didn't do nothing he was to the, the cars, man. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now it's like uh I, I I salute West Coast Customs, man, for for their interior and exterior design. Like they I feel they're top notch in that, but they're not mechanics. They just do interior and exterior work, but they're not actual mechanics that fix cars. So it it wasn't a scam. Um, it was it was completely free, and we actually got paid after they did our car. They paid you like fifty bucks or something like that. No, no, no. I I got, I got a fifteen hundred dollar check. So I really, don't know yeah, I don't know what everybody else. That's wild, got. man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's why I say like I never I, I don't have anything bad to say about MTV, man. They showed me love. Everybody was was delightful and cool, man. Um. It was, you know, I was kind of uh, pissed off by, you know, how how they carried on about like the car messing up. But I mean, they fixed it for us, man. We got an opportunity to be on TV, meet Exhibit, get our ride pimp, and you know, it's that that's I think where people look at the scam part because mm -hmm. they think because they see how they did the car that the engine is new and everything, and that's not the case or whatever. Yeah, so a lot of that stuff is because like they just, it's just too much liability. Like if they fix the engine or something like yeah. that, it'll take too long. And they'll say, then they expect it to be good for life and everything. And like some yes. of the cars, like yes. they have the smog regulations in California. Like, oh yeah, yeah. So like all the emission <laughs> stuff, if the car is super old, they can like do it without like getting like all that emissions testing. But uh, if it's like- That's, newer, what, that's like, what happened with mine. Mine, mine uh, never passed the smog, never. Yeah. Never, yeah, never passed the smog. So that's what ha that's what's up. Like all the cars that they did that were they engine swapped unless they broke down or something, they would just send it to a different shop or something like that. They were like all yeah. older than like 1970. Like they did some engine yeah, exactly later on. So exactly, like it's it's crazy, man. Like they just couldn't yeah. do that. And like I mean, I'm sure that it's not like I'm sure that they couldn't do the mechanical work, but it would just take too long mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Exactly, and exactly. For, especially for older what, cars. They didn't tell you up front or anything that was going to be like a brand new no. car or anything. Like they just said, this isn't nah. fix your car. It's just, we're just going to pimp it out, make it fancy. Yeah, everything. exactly. So, exactly. And then, you know, they don't, they don't ask you like, what's your preferred color? They don't, they don't do none of that. They just kind of just freestyle it based on, um, now they did put like a microphone, uh, like a baby PA system in my, in the back of my car for me, specializing in music and things like that. I had a wireless microphone and things like that. So they, they kind of uh, tailor make it based on what's your, your passion. Or what your yeah. dream is and things of that nature mm -hmm. which is cool too which is cool too so you know but i don't have nothing bad or negative to say that was cool man it, it was a it was a beautiful experience man um it it, it allowed it allowed me to see different different perspectives of production and just how things work but overall it was a great experience for me yeah so uh i want to ask you did like this experience on pin my ride did it lead you to uh like catapult you to the other acting roles that you were in, like on the MTV networks and stuff like that. Ah, uh, um, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, I think I I start kind of getting attracted to to just doing a film and other things like that. Matter of fact, I would say yes. I would say yes. I don't know the guy name who was the actual main camera guy, the director of photography, uh, director of photography for Pin My Ride, but he was real cool. And um, I know him. Him and my father was talking. He was kind of telling. My father, like, man, you know, JT's a good kid. He's a great kid. He's a natural at, you know, he needs to be in front of the camera. 
yada, yada, yada. So that kind of like kind of jump started in the show me like, you know, I probably can do this for some other shows. And that's when I started auditioning for um, other TV shows or whatever, other networks. Yeah, because like people said, uh, like a lot, I, I know a lot of comments, at least for, in your case, people said, I knew this shit was fake because like I saw my man on like College Hill or something like that. So they, <laughs> they had to just place him on that stuff. So Yeah, like, nah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nah. Yeah. It's, and that, and that's that's what I tell people all the time. Like, no, nah, I did. I went from Pimp My Ride. Then I went and auditioned for um, MTV's Yo Mama. I ended up getting on that show. And then uh, shortly after that, I, I kind of I went and auditioned for College Hill and landed on that. But the thing about it is, um, when I went to MTV, uh, Yo Mama, nobody knew I was on Pimp My Ride. And mm -hmm. the same thing when I went and did College Hill, when I was doing auditions for that, nobody in production knew I even did Pimp My Ride. It started taking time for people to kind of catch on. Like, you look familiar. Was you on? And I'm like, yeah, I was on Pimp My Ride. And they're like, oh, okay, okay, that's where I remember you from. So yeah, but nah, it's it's it that that's not it's not fake. That's it was actually me on foot, like really, uh, you know, going to these auditions and and you know attempting to get on the shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So did you get? Do you have any cool stories about the car, or did you get like any like famous attention from it at all? <laughs> oh man, in in South Central Los Angeles, yes, man. Because <laughs> um, uh, because it was so crazy, man. Um. Uh, People, I, I got I got shot in 2005 in my leg, and they had a rumor going around thinking that somebody attempted to take the car. They shot me and all that, and it was and it had nothing to do with the car or whatever. I've never nobody attempted to rob my car. Um, it definitely was an eye catcher in the city, but the city showed me love. I never had no no instances where somebody attempted to rob me. If I pull up at the gas station or some people will probably recognize me from the show. They ask me questions about the show and all that so it, it was that part was it was all cool it was all good man it was it was fun and in me i'm not really an attention person when i go out so i kind of didn't want to drive the car because soon as people see it on the street everybody's looking at intersections like cars are stopping yeah. everybody everybody's looking at the car you're like everybody. especially back then you're like a celebrity because i know in my case the guy the mm -hmm. car that i'm looking at buying the guys like i pull up to the gas station i have it parked outside my apartment and there's like 20 people mm -hmm. just swarming it like People are like, oh, yep. does it have still have this in it or whatever? And like yep. <laughs> some guy, like some guy, like chucked a rock in his window or something when he was parked outside. So wow, they're still really? getting attention still. And back then, like you, you, they recognized you from the show and they recognized the car. It was a lot more popular. Like it was like recent exactly. stuff. So they're exactly. still getting a lot of traction. Yeah, I can, I can imagine. And you know, you know, on the on the car I had, I had the Lamborghini doors. Oh yeah, that that too. Oh yeah. Whoa! Yeah, so, uh, you know, when I go to gas stations, I, I, since my car was so old, they didn't just lift up when I opened it. I had to kind of push it out, then lift it. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I never really used to lift it at all because that was a tension drawer to people, too, when they see the doors go up. So I just used to halfway open it, step out, slide out, and slide back in to avoid all that extra tension. So overall, yeah, you, overall, you had a really good experience. You do it yeah, all over it. again. I love you. Yeah, I do it all over. Yeah, I do it all over again, man. It was cool. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah. I enjoyed myself. MTV, man, they was they was super cool, and um, just the vibe and energy was there. You know, it was, it was dope. It was dope. To me, MTV was better than MTV. I mean, BT. The treatment I got there from that show was MTV was way better, man. It was real cool. They didn't give me no hassle. I think I, I swapped probably the the rental car like two or three times. You know what I'm saying? They was cool with that. Mm -hmm. They didn't give me no issues, no hassle with anything. They were cool. That was that's good then. So you got a good experience yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about like what you've been up to since the show and promote anything you want? Pretty much. Ah, right. well, man. Since uh, man, since the show, um, uh, as everybody know, I was doing music before Pin My Ride. Um, still was doing it during the show and still currently doing it to this day. I'm still uh, doing music. I'm working on a. a a debut album that I plan to release June 5th of this year. So uh, be checking out for that. And a lot of people don't know, I stepped into the realm of directing. So after I did College Hill, uh, still was doing music, but ended up starting to produce, create, uh, and direct my own films. I have a, a film company called Rider for Life Films. And uh, we got films on Apple TV, Tubi, Amazon Prime, all over right now that's on all like streaming platforms for uh, movies. Hands Up, Don't Shoot is a film I directed. The Council, uh, Frank Blue, Course of the Just, all these mo movies can be checked out there. So so my rap name is J5th, J-A-Y, yeah. you know, the number five T-H. You can 
I'm on SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, everything. Yeah, I'll be everything. linking it before. I've like, I've like listened to some of it. Yeah, so. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate yeah. you, Mike. I, and you and you reshare my thing, man. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Oh yeah, no problem. And I'll help out anyway. So I'll subscribe thank to you. everything, man. I'll, I'll promote it. Like any links that you want, just send them to me. Thank you. But yeah, thank so. You. Did you do you feel like the show helped your music career at all? So yo, you know you got to bless us with some yeah, stuff. Let's, let's do it. Yeah, go ahead. No, let's no, you gonna do it. No, and I and I only say that because uh what what I had what I had spit on there, it wasn't my best. Yeah. I was nervous, I was scared. Sure. It was kinda it was kinda cheesy, you know, it was for Pimar Ride, it was like a little uh freestyle I wrote particularly for the show. It was cheesy, but it was it was whatever, but so no. I'm with MTV, we doing it live. I'm that LA boy, that's on pin my ride. Now we can roll to the club, uh, in front to back. What uh, you see is what you get now. Remember that rap? Uh, yeah. I don't think in a, in a sense that did, but what 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 the thing about it was that people knew I was already rapping prior to pin my ride. Okay. Yeah. So that's what kind of yeah. Yeah. Uh, you want to talk about anything else about like the show or anything else? But I think we covered it pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm I'm. So, so you, did you watch all the seasons of? Oh yeah. I've seen every, I've seen every. So like I started watching it with my dad, probably like yeah. reruns. I wasn't old enough, man. I wasn't watching like right when it came out. I was probably watching like 2010 with my dad. And stuff. I watched <laughs> like it was literally on every single morning and like every week. And so I literally like get the DVR. I uh -huh. a series recording and I watch it every single day. And I probably watch every episode like 20 times. And then oh, like, that's years dope, ago, man. started watching like the episodes again on YouTube and everything, or like mm -hmm. started watching YouTube videos about it. And, I yeah, saw people like fixing up the cars from the show. Ah. Like some guy got one of the cars and he fixed it up and got like a lot of views. And that kind of yeah. sparked the idea. And then I saw like another video guy did. He's like, my wife was on the show. We still have the car and everything. And I'm like, <laughs> it got me swirling in my mind. Like I was looking for my first car like five years ago or something yeah. like that. I'm like, what if I could get a car from the show Pimp My Ride? Like my dad had this really <laughs> old, he had this really old car from like the 1970s. And yeah. like, I told him like, around the time I, I was watching the show i was getting into it he was like trying to sell the car and i told him no the, the show's gonna come back like he had a for sale <laughs> sign on the car and i would literally take it off when i came home from school and everything and i'm like you're gonna keep that car for me and he ended up selling it like two years ago and oh. sadly it's back up for sale again so i might i might try to pull the trigger on it if i can get it okay get it on it man but, I, I wish i wish they did keep the show man it was a dope ass show i yeah. loved it i loved it it was it was very entertaining it was yeah. very and i wish this generation had shows like that still you know yeah like mtv they're not do they're showing like the same show like yeah all day long it's not not the same at all like yeah, yeah. no my my goal eventually is to buy as many of the cars i can and then i'll mm -hmm. talk to some of the people who worked at west coast customs like i'm i've made contact with them and we're like we can maybe start this show back again like some of the guys want to do it again and like some of the people still have the car like i found about 10 people who still have the car just mm -hmm. tracking them down and everything and some of them like they didn't do engine work to them like they just sat most of them i just sat like some are still in really good shape they still get driven quite a bit but wow. uh we can we can maybe fix the stuff that we didn't get to do initially mm -hmm. so like some of the there's definitely interest there's just like like unfortunately like the show has a tainted reputation unfortunately yeah I'm yeah out. so like yeah mtv's like they're out like they they talk like they talked to some producers like some of the mm -hmm. crew members were still tight with the producers and stuff like that Mm -hmm. And they talked to him, but they just couldn't. MTV wouldn't pick it up. So, like, I'm wow. my goal is to get this car. I'm I'm in the process of buying it. Agreed on the price. He just has to fix some stuff up on it. But like, yeah, if I can get that car, start posting it everywhere, get some attention, and mm -hmm. then like rework on it myself, rebuild it, get a lot of views, then I could buy some of the other cars, fix them up, link up with the guys at West Coast Customs. We can bring back. Ah, the that's my goal eventually. Yeah. Hey man, well I pray it happens for you, man. That'd be yeah. dope. That'd be dope. And and just the fact that you're doing this is incredible because um you you're getting the true stories from people who's actually on the show. Exactly. So I, like here say, yeah. The issue is with the articles is like they said we interviewed these people, but the thing is that they can they can just take one thing they said, take it totally out of context and like write it for drama. Mm -hmm. Like this, you're getting the oh, real yeah. stuff. Like very few yeah, people. Exactly. Like very, there's very few stories about this. Like they kind of got the story, everything about it, and they know that it was a really good experience for you. So this is like this helps to kind of relive the reputation, saying it wasn't that bad. It wasn't perfect, but it yeah, it was, it was a lot better than what people are making it out seem out to be. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah, man, that's why I say overall my experience was great. I do hope one day that I can uh find the car and get it back really? because you know it had it has sentiment of sentimental value to yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I actually got that car uh, from my uncle who who ended up getting killed by the police in 2009. 
he that was a he sold me that car and mm -hmm. he actually was on the show with me or whatever the case may be so yeah it was kind of like one of them things of sentimental value because of him so you know i'm still looking to see if i can see it around here i seen it one time after it was told and it was on the street near on the back street of an old neighborhood i used to live in <laughs> just sitting <laughs> yeah just sitting how yeah. long ago was that yeah. Uh, this was probably, I say, 2014. Yeah, 2014 was the last time I seen it. Yeah, Could and I be believe it got somewhere. it got it got told. I I would like to say probably 20, 2012 or twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen, okay. it got told. Yeah, yeah. So it got told. Yeah. Probably got to an impound lot or something like that. I assume. And somebody, yeah, somebody so got it. Probably pocket. picked it up from there at least. So at least it didn't yeah. get junked. Exactly. Yeah. Could be, yeah. could be out there still. If I can find it, I'll definitely let you know. Oh man, please. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying, man. It's, I'm still it's not looking easy, too. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at finding these things. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You find, you found me, man, and I and I like, I like hiding under a rock. So yeah, you know, I was shocked that you found me. <laughs> that will wrap up the interview portion of the video. I would like all of you to go check out JT's stuff, his music, and his films that he's directed and starred in. I'll link all that stuff down in the description. I'm a fan of his music, uh, and I've yet to check out the movies, but I definitely will. So please go do that. And if you need any help finding anything of them that you want to check out, just hit me up, and I'll find that for you guys. Uh, just do it as a thank you. Uh, share it, whatever, as a thank you for him doing this video. He didn't have to do it, and uh, he dropped down a lot of insight for you guys, and uh, I'm glad he did it. So please, please, please do that as a thank you. Just go support him, and also support me, guys. YouTube. They demonetized my channel for whatever reason. I don't know what I did wrong to upset them, but I appealed and they said no. So ever since that happened, it seems like the views have been on the decline for me, which is not what I want to do because as we kind of talked about in the interview vid, I was actually buying one of the Pimp My Ride cars, which I did buy. And I do have two videos on that car. So go check out those videos. And I want to be able to do more interview videos with contestants like I did to JT. I actually know of about 40 to 45 contestants who are on the show. And I haven't reached out to all of them yet because if I know that they don't have the car, I really haven't reached out yet. Just I'm more concerned about like where the cars are today. But I do want to interview as many as I can. So if this does well, uh, we do have one other contestant that said they would do an interview. Uh, I just we just couldn't find a time to set it up. We were gonna do it last year, but it just didn't happen. But uh, I'll reach out to them again and get that set up. So we'll have another one coming shortly, hopefully. And then yeah, if you guys keep supporting me, I'll keep dropping the interview videos. We can maybe do like as many as like 20 of them i can't force everyone to talk to me but uh i think some would definitely do it and it just opens the gateway to do it if you want another interview video, i actually did one with a contestant from the uk who was on the new reboot of mtv pimp my ride 2022 in the uk on youtube so go check that out as well and just thank you guys for watching um like i said we got a lot of stuff going on with the channel we're going to be repimping the cadillac that i bought from the show and we have a lot of stuff planned from it Hopefully, YouTube will uh, get their act together and allow me to make some money. But until then, please, please, please just share the video with a friend who ever said Pimp My Ride was fake. There's a lot of videos out there on the real truth of the show that they don't know jack shit about what actually happened or did not talk to any contestants. And this is living proof that not all the claims were real in those HuffPo articles and all like the BuzzFeed stuff and all the stuff that you read on the internet. Not all that stuff that people are saying is actually true. And a lot of it just BS. Uh, obviously his experience is different from other people's experience. Like not everyone had a little bit of a different experience. Like uh, he got paid $1,500, which uh, I can tell you, and he got a free rental car. So I can tell you that may have not been the case for some other people, but overall uh, it was a really good experience. Pimp My Ride was not a scam. It was not fake. And I hope this video solidifies that. And I'd like to encourage you to share the video with others who watch Pet My Ride. I'd really like to grow this channel. I'm tracking down the cars. I know of 10 contestants who still own the car. And I own one of the cars from the show that I'm going to be repimping. So we have a lot of big stuff coming soon. So I'd love for you guys to be along there for the ride. So subscribe, turn your notifications on, and actually watch the damn videos when you get notifications. So on my last video, uh, like 140 people or something like that got notifications. And only five of those people who had notifications watched the actual video. So Subscribe and watch the damn videos and don't forget about me because I will appreciate it. All right, guys, that's enough for this video. Um, We're going to have more videos coming out soon on Pimp My Ride. Comment below what cars you want to see me cover next. 
and I'll deliver the goods. Stay tuned, guys. Big things coming, and keep grinding, and I'll see you in the next one. The car basically speaks for itself. I'm not embarrassed no more when I roll up. Thanks, MTV, for pimping my ride.